Welcome back. So in the previous video, we talked about why story mapping is useful. And you can find the link of the video on the top right corner. Uh, now we're going to talk about how to build one. Right. So the first and foremost thing is, uh, this is how it looks in the end. Uh, this is like a finished story map uh, from one of, the, one of the projects. So the key idea is to first clear up the space. Uh, it could be wall, it could be like, like a floor space, anywhere where you can you know, spread the cards and, and like a, the limitation should not be uh, space. And there are digital versions of it as well, but if you're doing this for the first time, our recommendation would be uh, to do it physically and then move to a digital version. All right, so that is step one. Uh, the other thing is we are also going to talk about the various nuances if you are getting on to an existing project where uh, things are being tracked currently in a flat backlog uh, in, a, in a very flat manner, or you could be starting a new project, right? So have that distinction in mind and then we're going to talk, talk through step by step, right? Uh, so the first step is to... Um, in an existing project, you might have features, uh, not a problem. You can just align the features in, in a sequential manner, right? Uh, or if you already are on a new project and you've done the user journey well, then just highlight the high user journey steps, put them into a sequential order, right? Just remember that if your features are not already from a user perspective, um, please, please change the language to a user perspective and rather than uh, talking system language, right? So if we again refer back to our uh, Swiggy example, um, these are the steps how, um, how like the major steps from, from Swiggy would look like. Yeah, and uh, just, to, just to add a little bit of a nuance to what Richard was saying, the major steps are in the, uh, the articulation is from a user goal perspective. So the user wants to access the system, the user wants to find a restaurant, the user wants to plan a meal, pay for the meal, track their order, and then get food at home. And so what that does is helps tell a cohesive story. Right. All right. Uh, after that, I think if you're already on an existing project, you might have certain stories. Just align all the stories uh, into- Sorry. Oops, getting ahead of you. Sorry, Richard. There you go. Right. Uh, so if you're on an existing project, you might already have uh, a lot of stories in place. Just place them under the feature, right? If you've aligned the, uh, the features, just place them underneath it. If you're on a new project, uh, you have the detailed user journey steps, put them under the major user, user journey step. Uh, if there is anything more that you need to add, these are the questions, ask yourself, this, these will help you in, in adding more details, right? So after this, your story map should uh, look something like this, right? One more, yeah. Where uh, you can divide your story map into goals, activities, and tasks. Uh, and a little nuanced difference between an activity and a task is activity is nothing but just a group of tasks and tasks are at a very, very detailed level. Uh, for example, if I were to pick one, uh, for example, paying for my meal. Uh, paying for my meal could involve different activities. I first need to choose my payment method. Uh, then in the background, uh, Swiggy needs to integrate me to a payment gateway. Uh, I need to enter my, uh, my credentials, say approval, uh, or add a promo code, and then uh, finally pay. Uh, so these are various activities that need to be done in order for me to pay for my meal. But underneath those activities, under selecting a payment method, there could be multiple, like credit card, debit card, net banking, and so on. Even if the payment gateway is the same, I can follow different journeys, whether I have a promo code, not a promo code, how do I explain it? So, so you can see the difference between an activity and a task. Uh, it wouldn't really uh, call them, like activities are nothing but just a bunch of tasks grouped together. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and one of the things which um, you will notice once we start getting into writing user stories is that uh, there's a very strong connection between tasks and goals. Uh, but just uh, 
as an example, the way you would start to word your user stories is as a user of some sort, uh, I want to complete this task to achieve this goal. And just keep that in, your, in the back of your head. Uh, we'll, we'll come back to that when we are discussing user stories. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so you have a beautiful story map with goals, activities, and, and tasks. Hopefully you've arranged them in, in a sequential order. Um, sometimes you may come across uh, in, in like, you know, certain situations where you feel like, hey, these activities activities are happening simultaneously. You know, what do I do? Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, for example, whenever you confirm an order, multiple things happen in the background, right? The restaurant gets notified, the delivery person gets notified and multiple things happen. Uh, just, it's okay, just, just order it in, in, in any way, which makes it easier for you to narrate stories. Keep in mind, narrating stories is, uh, is extremely important and story map is just a tool which is making it easier for us to do that. Um, Align the tasks in, in the manner of criticality, uh, like prioritize them, like for this particular persona, which is the most critical task that I need to do that will help me complete an activity and hence make me achieve the goal. Uh, ask yourself that question, just arrange it in the order. Uh, if you're again going into uh, an existing project or, or a new project, doesn't matter. Uh, it's good to do it with your team and stakeholders together so that you're all on the same page. Right, uh, moving ahead. Uh, so this kind of representation would also help you notice some of the missing pieces in the, in the entire workflow. Um, look out for them. Uh, see if, if your story is complete or, or something feels incomplete when, when you're narrating it. I think uh, this kind of a representation, like we talked earlier, makes it easier for, for us to notice these kind of missing pieces. Uh, so see if there's anything missing, add them. Uh, the last is mark the first slice. So you will definitely not be uh, doing everything, but mark the first slice in a way which uh, helps you to complete each of the user goals. Um, and, and not really like go horizontal and not vertical. And, and like Samit was saying in, in certain, when we go to the stories, you might get confused where we talk about where we encourage vertical over horizontal, but here just, just be, be horizontal. Yeah. And that's the reason why we said, arrange it in order of criticality, because then, you know, you do the first items first. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, all right. Uh, the next step is, this is how a digital story map looks like. Um, this is from a tool called Stories On Board. I personally have used it extensively. It makes us very easy for us to, uh, makes it very easy for me to uh, collaborate with the, the clients and, and the team, uh, especially when we're remote. Um, so there are users like personas in, uh, in, in the first row, if you see. Second row is goals, activities, tasks, and then everything is chopped out by, by releases. Uh, there is also a Jira plugin, uh, with, which helps us do story maps. There are various other tools like Cardboarded. We, uh, we can collate a list and, and we will provide that to you. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. And again, notice the linkage. Uh, one more reason that we put up this example is that you can notice the linkage between the tasks and the goals up top. So for example, uh, you can say as a user, I wanna add an item to my basket so I can buy that product. And that's one of the stories that you should be able to tell, uh, not just to your clients, but also to your team. Right. And also notice the activities uh, that you need to do in order to buy a product, right? So you sign up, you add to basket, place an order, make a payment, like all of these things are steps uh, just yeah. for you to buy the product. Now the granularity you can decide and it is pretty contextual. You can decide based on your own project uh, and, and, and yeah, your own scenarios. Yeah. Cool. What if, what if uh, stories on board is banned and the client isn't willing to pay for the Jira plugin? Just use the walls and, and the floor. <laughs> yes. Indeed, the good old walls. 
All right, so that pretty much ends our segment on story mapping. Um, we will add in a few resources uh, in the description of this video and in the course as well. And there should be an assignment that will help you get some deeper understanding of the concept. Uh, and now we can move to the next segment. Uh, actually, sorry to uh, stop you, Sameet. There are also a lot of free versions of a lot of these tools available, which will just restrict you for collaboration. But if the aim is just to build a story map, uh, then you can go ahead and build it. Yeah, indeed. Off to the next video. See you in the next video.